In the next seven minutes, you're going to learn. I don't know why I'm giggling. That's not funny. That's that's really not funny. In the next seven minutes, you're going to learn 30 things in Adobe Illustrator that all graphic designers need to know, but that most, well, they don't. And this bag of tricks will save you time, reduce frustration, and ultimately make your creative life so much easier. Now we've got a lot to cover in just seven minutes and I haven't even got a watch on, so definitely stick around till the end so you don't miss anything. But anyway, let's get started. To copy appearance effects from one object to another, select both, go to the layers panel, find the layer with the effects you'd like to copy, hold alt or option and drag one circle onto the other, and all of the appearance effects are now copied over. Right, let's start by drawing a line, thicken up that stroke weight, and if we open up the stroke panel we can check the box for dashed line, set the dash to zero, and the gap to whatever you like. Change the cap type to round, and you now have a dotted line, and you can change the distance by adjusting the gap value. Right, two overlapping circles, let's select them, go to object, down to intertwine, and select make. Get rid of helpful but slightly annoying pop-up, and then drag over an area where the shapes intersect to intertwine them both. If your artwork extends beyond the bounds of the artboard, go to View and Trim View to get a trimmed preview. Did you know that if you select the Arc tool and click and drag to draw a curved line, whilst drawing the line you can press F to flip the direction? Okay, let's select the Pencil tool, and then draw a squiggly line. As you can see this is pretty awful, but if I go back to this menu and click and hold I can select the Smooth tool, and using this you can click and drag repeatedly to go over the line to smooth out all of these curves. And you can see me doing this here repeatedly, and this is a great way to clean up any janky curves. Okay, following on from that let's double click the Pencil tool, and then go and check this option here. Now when we draw a squiggly line, again terrible, we can hold down Alt or Option which is a nifty shortcut to switch to the Smooth tool. Now we have a big red circle, and I want to cut this with the knife tool. So with this tool selected I'm going to click and drag holding shift, and it doesn't cut a straight line. The solution? Well you need to hold down alt or option and shift to cut straight lines. Not sure why, reasons I guess. But once you've made some clean cuts you can now separate the shape into individual pieces. Okay we have a gradient running from left to right, let's select this shape, go to the gradient panel, make sure the stroke is selected, and we can now click through these options to change how the gradient is applied to a stroke. So for example if I select the middle one and then bring this right edge in, I can now add a highlight to the very end of that stroke. Okay now we have a bright pink circle, let's select the pencil tool, because did you know you can actually draw over an existing shape with this tool and it will reshape it. Now for fun let's just draw some eyes, change the colour to white, duplicate them, make them black, <laughs> there we go. Let's give this guy a name in the comments. Again another one with the pencil tool, god this is relentless. Let's draw a terrible line, there we go, double click the pencil tool, and you can drag this slider to the right if you'd like smoother curves. Let's try that same curve again, and you can see less accurate but much smoother. Right, next I'm going to select the star tool, click and drag to draw a star, and then use the up and down arrow keys to adjust the number of points. And you can also hold down command or control and drag to adjust the size of the radius. Did you know the spacebar is a shortcut to use the hand tool to pan around? You can use command or control plus or minus to zoom in or out, you can press Z or Z for the zoom tool, and command or control zero fits the artboard to the screen. Okay, so I've got some icons, if I go to the swatch panel and scroll down, I can double click one of the global swatches, make sure that the global option is checked, and if I enable preview and adjust the sliders, any change to a global swatch will be updated throughout the entire document. Very useful indeed. Now let's take a look at tints. First go to window and down to color, let's select one of these icons with a global swatch, switch over to color guide and make sure we set this as the base color. Now we can click through the tints to apply a tint of that same global swatch, and the great thing about this is if we go and edit the original color of the global swatch, so let's make this red, all of the related tints will also be updated as well. Okay so how do you edit a new document? Well you can go to document setup and change a few things, but you can also select the artboard tool and change the artboard's width and height from the top right corner. Now to change the DPI we need to go to effect and select this option here, and from the drop down we can change the colour mode or the DPI, and you can also scroll to the bottom of the file menu if you'd like to switch between the CMYK and RGB colour modes. Okay so we have an artboard, with the artboard tool let's add a few more artboards, and uh, oh, oh yuck. But don't worry we can fix this mess by going to rearrange all, choosing the layout type, we can adjust the number of columns, set the spacing between artboards, and voila! Ah chaos be gone, lovely. Okay super quick tip, go to view down to outline to get a wireframe preview of your design. 
And following on from that, we can select the Shape Builder tool, make sure the design is selected, and click and drag through segments to combine them. This is kind of like the new intertwine feature, but a bit more permanent, and you can hold Alter Option and click to remove segments. Okay, now I have a blue circle. Jeez, he loves his circles, doesn't he? Let's go and select the scissor tool and click anywhere on this circle to add a cut. I can now switch to the direct selection tool, select a segment and remove it, and it will stop where I made that cut. Make sure you remove any duplicate anchor points, and then you can grab that end anchor point and just wave it around or... Okay, next, you can use the eyedropper tool to copy some of the properties from one shape to another. But if you'd like to sample the color, not the shape's properties, hold shift and click, and it will sample that exact color. Another quick tip, you can double click the eyedropper tool and choose exactly what this tool picks up and applies. You may know that you can adjust the properties of an object from the transform panel using the arrow keys. But did you also know you can hold down shift to move in larger increments or command or control to move in smaller increments? Now we can also use this panel to adjust the width and height of an object using math. Simply go to the end and we'll go minus 50%, press return, and the circle becomes 50% smaller. And this also works for addition, multiplication, and division. Haha, <laughs> this next one. Okay, at some point you will accidentally select the perspective tool. This crap appears, and like a sane person you'll try and click the X to close. Well, nothing will happen and you'll enter a fit of rage. Once you eventually calm down, go to view, down to perspective grid, and here is your savior, Hide Grid. You are welcome. Okay, double clicking a group is basically Inception. You can keep double clicking to go more layers in, and a quick way out is to double click anywhere on the workspace. And I only just learned this a few days ago. Okay, something else you may not know is that you can go to Window and down to Brushes. Draw a line or a shape or whatever, and then from the menu icon in the top right corner, go to Open Brush Library and choose from plenty of brushes that ship with Illustrator. So let's go for some paintbrush ones, and with the line selected we can click through and apply these different brush effects. You can also cycle through the brush categories from the bottom, and you can also download and install more brush packs from platforms like Envato Elements. Okay, we have some overlapping circles, let's select them and select the divide option from the Pathfinder panel, and it will group these together, so with them selected, right click and select ungroup, and where all of these shapes are intersecting has now been separated into individual shapes. And yes, this does look shit. Right, two more to go, so let's go up to Illustrator's Preferences, which is under the Edit menu if you're on Windows. Select Performance and give yourself more undo state, so now when we screw up our design work, we have that added peace of mind. Also by default, Illustrator always saves to the fucking cloud, but if you don't want that, you can again go to Preferences and select File Handling. And you can now change the default location to stop this window popping up every single time. Now, if you're hungry for more and would like to learn 13 tools and techniques to help you become a better logo designer, well, there's a video on my face to help you do just that. So give it a click and I'll see you in a sec.